Metacognition is thinking about thinking. When you sit in a classroom and you listen to what the educator is saying, you're thinking. When you're reading a book and you're processing the words, you're thinking. But when you're trying to figure out what you understand and what you don't understand, or what processes you should engage in when you're studying for an exam, you're actually thinking about your thinking. And that's what we mean by metacognition. Now, there are at least two different forms of metacognition, metacognitive knowledge and metacognitive monitoring. Metacognitive monitoring is when we're monitoring or evaluating our performance. You may have experienced this when you start talking and you get halfway through a sentence and you think, oh, no, that wasn't right. Rewind and let's start again. That's metacognitive monitoring. You are thinking about your thinking. So let's use an example of this passage of text. Now take a moment to read what this text says. What you may not have noticed is this text has a number of inconsistencies. And readers, just like listeners in a classroom, often don't notice these because we don't engage in metacognitive processes often enough. So you may not have noticed that even though this paragraph is all about poverty, there's this reference to great wealth. That's a main point in consistency. It's inconsistent with what that paragraph is telling us. But there's more than that. In there, we also talk about private ownership of companies. Yet in the very next sentence, there's a reference to government ownership. There's a detail in consistency. Too often, what we do is we just passively take in this information without engaging in metacognitive monitoring, and we just accept what we hear or what we read as accurate without really evaluating whether it actually is. Metacognitive knowledge refers to our ability to appraise what we know and what we don't yet know. The problem is, like with metacognitive monitoring, we rarely engage in these metacognitive processes, which leads us to often overestimate what we know, or at least what we think we know. For example, if I were to ask you how long do you have to wait before filing a missing persons report, what would you say? A lot of people would say 24 hours. It's what we're familiar with. We know that, right? There's actually no time limit. There's no set time for filing a missing persons report. If I were to ask you what color enrages a bull, you'd say red, wouldn't you? Actually, bulls can't see red. It's more likely that there's a carpet waving around in front of them that enrages them than the color itself. This happens in the classroom, too. We sit in a classroom and we listen to what the instructor is telling us, or we read a textbook and we take in that information and we think, I understood that. I understood every word that they said. But that's not the same as knowing it. So we've overestimated what we actually know. Try and repeat that lecture back in an hour's time or a day's time, never mind in 10 weeks' time when you're sitting the exam, and it becomes a lot more sparse, a lot fuzzier in terms of your memory. So we need to engage in this metacognitive knowledge, an appraisal of what we know and what we don't yet know, in order to evaluate what we actually do understand. To reach those higher levels of learning and performance, we really need to monitor and control our thought processes and also evaluate what we know and what we don't yet know. We need to engage in metacognition. As educators, it's important to realize, though, that this doesn't just develop spontaneously. It doesn't happen automatically. We benefit from learning how to learn. And we benefit from being prompted to actually reflect on our thinking and evaluate the thought processes that we're engaging in.